Man, I'm excited to show you this one. Coming up next, an interview with one of the most prolific songwriters in the history of rock and roll. He co-wrote so many hits, the biggest selling American band ever. Today's song, it's a full on brawl. Written and recorded when this band was at each other's throats and about to break up. This song came out of a jam session by the band's co-front man and this songwriter, but they couldn't really nail down the chorus exactly, so later the singer called a famous buddy and he sang the song over the phone to him. Amazingly, this legend on the other line, he sang back exactly what they needed to finish the song and it became the band's last number one hit. Get the story straight from the legend coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember uh, racing uh, VHS rentals back to the store, so you wouldn't get charged a late fee back in the day, you're gonna dig this channel, a pure musical nostalgia. Make sure that you subscribe below right now and click the bell, the notification button, so you always know when our new ones are dropping, our interviews, our videos. Also, check us out, uh, our exclusive content on Patreon that helps us keep it a daily channel, as well as our merch below. I gotta tell you, I've been waiting a long time to interview today's guest. Uh, I've admired his career for so many years. He's written so many modern day standards, and he's a hell of a singer in his own right. He's likely most famous for co-writing some of the biggest hits for America's biggest selling band ever, Eagles. I'm talking about songwriter, Hall of Famer, J.D. Souther. In fact, uh, the combined writing and vocal talent of J.D. has helped to sell more than 120 million albums around the world. He's been nominated multiple times for Grammy, CMA, and ACM awards, and the recipient of the prestigious ASCAP Golden Note Award as well. Also, very, a very fine actor with a role in the movie Postcards from the Edge starring Meryl Streep. He also uh, appeared in 30-something and most recently recurring role on the series Nashville. Sorry, I think I'd take the long view on that. He's going to be around for a while. Nothing this guy can't do. He's co-written some of the Eagles' most beloved songs, including the number one hits, Best of My Love. I give you the best of my love. New Kid in Town. as well as other Eagles favorites like James Dean. Doolin Dalton. How Long. And then he's written some great ones for and with other legends, including Her Town 2 with James Taylor. Heart of the Matter by Don Henley. Even if you don't love me anymore. They co-wrote that also with Mike Campbell, as well as his own solo number one hit, You're Only Lonely. When you're only lonely. And then there's today's number one hit, Heartache Tonight. You're gonna love this story. It's a perfect fit for our Revelation show where artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums. So today, we're gonna head back to the end of the 70s. Eagles had just dominated radio for most of the decade. They were coming off one of the biggest selling albums ever and one of the biggest title tracks, Hotel California. Welcome to the Hotel California. They were so big, some were calling them the American Beatles, but the band, they were starting to come apart at the seams. Tempers were flaring, members were leaving or getting ousted. Of course, Bernie Ledden was gone much earlier in 1975, and then Randy Miser was gone by the time they started up Sessions for the Long Run, which would be uh, the Eagles' sixth studio album, actually their final studio album for many years. It was released in 1979 on Asylum. They had brought in former Poco singer Timothy B. Schmidt to replace Miser, also a, a phenomenal bassist. It was also the final studio record for guitarist Don Felder, who would be officially terminated uh, decades later in 2001. This was a tough album to make. Uh, it took forever. Even one member jokingly said it should have been called the long one. Uh, three big singles were released from the record, including the title track. How long, how long? Woman, 
and the Timothy B. Schmidt song, I Can't Tell You Why. Both of these went to number eight, and then today's song, Heartache Tonight, which went to the top of the charts and actually won a Grammy. Take a chance. Make it come right. The album, it would also hit number one, and it would sell eight million copies. Now, it wasn't as acclaimed as his predecessor, but, you know, how do you top Hotel California? Uh, they get close. It's a great record. Uh, they also ended up recording two Christmas songs during these sessions, uh, Funky New Year and the classic Please Come Home for Christmas. That one would chart at number 18 and always a classic we listen to every year. Please come home for Christmas. So all this, uh, all this tension that you'll hear in Heartache tonight when you listen to it, it all came to a head on July 31st, 1980 in Long Beach, California. It's where the band almost killed each other on stage. And what has been famously called Long Night at Wrong Beach, uh, the frustration between Felder and Fry came to a head, this is before the show started, uh, when Fry's guest, Alan Cranston, a California senator, was backstage with his wife. Uh, the band did a benefit for his re-election, and uh, the senator's wife was thanking them, you know, thanking the band for this. This is when Don Felder said, you're welcome, I guess. From that point on, Glenn Fry and Dom Felder spent the entire show telling each other about the beating uh, each planned to give each other after the show. Glenn Fry would say, and I quote, only three more songs until I kick your ass. Felder has said that he remembered Fry telling him during uh, Best of My Love, I'm going to kick your ass when we get off the stage. <laughs> oh, these stories are so great. Well, to say the least, they had to be separated before they killed each other after the show. And that was pretty much the end of the Eagles for a long time, a long run. One even said they'd only get together when hell freezes over, and then later they named their album that. Very cool. That's another story for another day, though, and we will definitely tell it. But let's get into the interview. Heartache Tonight, it kind of sounds like the mood the Eagles were in at the time. It sounds like a barroom brawl. It's such a cool song. And J.D. Souther and Glenn Fry, they knew they had something special, but they needed to perfect the chorus. So after trying to knock it out and coming up a little bit short, Glenn Fry called a buddy of his, another legend of American rock, and he sung what they had over the phone to this legend. Seconds later, this guy sang back the perfect chorus. Coming up next, JD, he's going to tell you what legend that was and why he never recorded his own version. Fans begged him to, but he never did. As we go into this interview, do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the brand I always wear. When you click on our info button right up here, it will get you the best prices on Zenny Eyewear, up to 80% off regular retail prices. You can also design your very own pair. You can add amazing features like blue blocks to protect your eyes from digital blue light. It's been a game changer for me. You know, we all get tired from looking at the blue screens. So check it out. Click here to get the best POR deal. Heartache Tonight, this was a pivotal song for the band because this was their follow-up to, obviously, the epic Hotel California, and, you know, Long Run took every ounce of energy, reportedly, and creativity from the guys to, to get it finished. They joked about calling it the long one to the recording team. Yeah, it was the long one. Well, Heartache Tonight, such a classic, another collaboration with Don and Glenn, but also involved teaming up with the great Bob Seger. Last minute. We just couldn't, we didn't think we had the chorus just right. And, uh, you know, uh, Glenn Fry and Bob Seger were old buddies. Uh, in fact, Glenn is the harmony singer on Rambling Gambler Man. We just didn't think it was finished. The verses were really tight. Glenn and I had started them just walking around my house, snapping our fingers, clapping our hands. And then Henley got in on it, cleaned him up a little, song got stronger. And then, uh, still just didn't think we had the chorus perfectly. I don't know exactly what happened in what order then, but I know Glenn was talking on the phone to Bob and he said, hey, we got this song we can't seem to finish. And uh, he sang it to Bob and Bob sang him the chorus. <laughs> he went, oh, okay. Tonight, I know. I know. That was the chorus. You've wrote that first verse after listening to a Sam Cooke song. We had been listening to Sam Cooke songs all day. I didn't mean, realize that most of them were like, that good. Having a party. Everybody's feeling great. 
It's all oh, meet me at Mary's. Twisting, twisting, twisting the night away. Everybody's feeling great. They twist and laugh. Twist. Even the first one is only 16, only 16. With eyes that would glow. A lot, a lot of shuffles. And we just thought, man, it's so hard. How come white guys can't play shuffles with it? Damn. He was only 16. On the 16th. Let's do one, you know? And we start snapping our hands. Somebody's gonna hurt someone. Somebody's gonna hurt someone. They had a shuffle. And uh, couldn't quite, didn't think the chorus was just quite locked enough to be, to be the best that it could be. And then really, Bob did very little except just rearrange some ideas, but he just threw them back exactly perfectly. In fact, to my understanding, we can't ask Glenn now, but I think Glenn said he just sang the chorus to him, just like this is the way it goes. Glenn called Don, Don called me and said, hey, we got a fourth writer. And I said, well, that's splitting the money a lot of ways. Better be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don said, "Yeah, it's Bob. It's good." No, well, okay, it's here. And that's something else that I think I heard him work on, but I didn't. I didn't never heard that finished until it was on the radio. Somebody's gonna come undone. There's nothing we can. Glenn just was singing it over to Bob Seger over the phone. Over the phone. That's what's so cool. Again, you, these things don't happen as much with him. He's talking to Bob Seger. He sings it over, and then. And Bob sings it back over the phone. And like you said, it was something you guys already had, but he just sang it in a different way. And it kind of it went, oh, there it is. I don't know what we had to start, frankly. It, obviously, it had the words heartache tonight in it, but I can't even remember how it went because uh, Bob's version of it was so good. It's just we forgot. You know, it's the way when, when you're working along, you're chipping away at a sculpture. And the idea is to chip away everything that's not necessary. Well, talking about that clapping with that percussive sound... I had read that maybe uh, an Andrew Gold song was maybe a little bit of an inspiration there, too. Well, they all influenced each other all the time because it was the same 10 or 12 musicians who were mostly in the studio all the time together. How does the conversation go? I'm just curious, of leading into a decision to add hand claps to a recording. Nothing. There's nothing to it. It's this. You want to try some hand claps? Okay. <laughs> and it's either no... They're not working? Or, yeah, I think it's going to work. Let's tighten them up. Let's double it. Yeah, it's that simple thing. Everybody wants to do somebody. And since it's how the song started, it really wasn't a big stretch. It just And that fabulous bass drum sound, that boom, 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 boom. Everybody wants to take a little chance. You know what they did? They went and got a big marching drum. Because they couldn't figure out how to make the regular kit bass drum sound loud enough. So they got a big marching drum for college or something. And I, I hated it at first because I, I like drums that really ring. I'm like a jazz kid. You know, I want drums to be touched lightly and ring. And, and I couldn't stand it. And then I heard it on the, uh, uh, I, so I did hear it before it was on the radio. Yeah, some, somebody played it at my house. Maybe Don came over and played it for me. And I thought, well, it's great, but man, that is the deadest drum sound. It just sounds like boxes. And then I heard it on the radio, and it sounded like a locomotive. It was so huge. So they were right. You know? Well, and I'll bet you that they thought that about how are people going to hear this over the radio. Oh, yeah, it was delivered. They wanted, if, if the only instruments are going to be boom, 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 you make it as big as you can. And, the, and it did. It sounded louder than anything else on the radio at the time, which is, well. Everybody wants to touch somebody. If it takes That's the way that Motown, that Lamont Dozier and a lot of those guys did things. You know, they, they played to the radio. They knew that that's how millions of people would be hearing their records. The he was telling me that they, would, they actually put a signal out in a car from hitsville and when they get a song done they would they would transmit it to the radio 
to see what, how it would sound coming out of the car speakers. Of course. We were still doing that when we were making Henley solo records. We had a little broadcast uh, rig set up at A&M, which is now Henson Recorders, named after Jim Henson. But it was A&M, and, and we would go sit in the car and call Shelly Ackes. And, okay, broadcast it. Play. Okay, take uh, two dBs off the bottom at 200. Let's hear it again. So cool. And you do it until it sounded like, until it was filling the radio as much as it possibly could fill the radio. This night is going to last forever. Last all- what I love that what they did with Heartache Tonight, too, is it, it really had such a, like you say, that drum sound. Now that makes sense. But also, not only the hand claps and the way they sing it, but it really sounds like there's going to be a brawl. I mean, they just have this feeling <laughs> that they, they yeah. put there and... and Eagles did that better than anybody. Glenn and Don, they, they really knew how to put you in that moment. You were part of the story. I know that's why their music will last another thousand, two thousand, three thousand years because people can relate. They're in the middle of the song. It did, it did carry a lot of tension, didn't it? All the way through the song. It did. I mean, they were going through that tension at that moment in the band with everything kind of coming coming down because yeah. the breakup happened soon after. But also, musically, it goes back to that, too. A- after the solo in the second chorus, it goes back to... <laughs> Tense again. Now, what's happened? Huh? You know, all, the, all four. Somebody's... It's, it's, uh, it's manufactured tension, but it's real once it's manufactured. Once it's there, it's there. You know? Somebody's gone. Well, there have been a lot of covers of it, too, and Conway Twitty did it. Michael Buble. I love Buble's record. It's exactly what I always wanted, a big band version of it. I thought it was so interesting how he did that. I do. Too. I wish he'd do something else in mind. I'm thinking of writing a couple of things just for him. I love that. I, that's my era of music, really, more than the music that I heard when I was a teenager. You know, Linda Ronstadt used to say she thought that the music that you heard before you were 10 or 12 years old was made the most lasting impression. I think she's right. That's that's what I heard was, was Sinatra, Sinatra, and Sinatra, and some opera and a lot of jazz. And then gradually a little bit of country music, but not really until I met Linda, who seemed to know everything about country music. I just read an article a couple of weeks ago about that very thing. It says that the, the music that you hear before 12 to 13 years of age, all of that is what will inspire your listening. And I'm sure yeah. it's true. Well, Conway Twitty, Tom Jones, John Anderson. Tom Jones did it? Yeah. You kidding? No. Oh, man, I got to find that. I, I am a, despite how silly he appears at times, I am a Tom Jones fan. Oh, I am too. That guy has got a big, booming, amazing voice. Yeah, one of the great, I, I agree, one of the great singers. But Richard Marks, he was definitely influenced with his number one rocket, Don't Mean Nothing. But fans have wanted uh, Bob Seger to record it. And what he has said, I love what he said. He said, it's a hard freaking song to sing. Very difficult. Well, if you saw the Eagles, what did they get in, Dr. Lincoln Center, Kennedy Center or something? And Bob sang it. Somebody's going to hurt somebody. It's, it's hard to sing. I can't sing. None of us can sing it in the original key that Glenn sang it. It's just got some notes that are screechers. Well, and then Bob, of course, Bob played it at uh, Glenn's memorial service. That was that was cool. I know. I sang hard. A uh, new kid in town. It's hard to get through. You know, we all just decided going in that we were, we knew Henley was going to make the big two hour speech. So the rest of us just keep it light. Glenn wouldn't want us all moping around here, you know. So we set up. Thought the smartest thing to do in honor of our buddy Glenn was to be do an eagle step. Hey, leave 
Leave us a comment about the Eagles and their final record, the long run and heartache tonight. What are your memories? What do you think about the three singles from this one? So many other great tracks on this. What about J.D. Souther, one of the greatest ever, just a prolific writer. Got to check out his, uh, his last couple solo albums. They're really great. I'm going to link to them below. Something in the dark. What are your memories of Heartache Tonight? Such a classic. Let's discuss it in the comments. If you like our content, we just invite you to be a part of our, our regular supply here. Every day we come at you, just click on the subscribe button below. And you know what? Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. We'll talk to you very soon.